Are you ready to make the most of your oil and gas mineral rights? Welcome to the Mineral Rights Podcast. Get the knowledge and resources you need to manage your minerals and royalties. Here is your host, Matt Sands. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Mineral Rights Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Sands. I'm joined today by our special guest, Justin Williams. Hi, Justin. Hi, Matt. Thank you for having me. Thanks again for being on the show. Today, we're going to talk about a potentially deceptive practice that we've come across uh, in the oil patch, and it's the concept of royalty leasing. And when it's done in an upfront manner, um, a royalty deed or term royalty deed is is certainly a um, straightforward and and, um, fine thing to do. But where we're coming across this is uh, where people are potentially signing a royalty lease when they think they're signing a mineral lease. So want to bring this uh, to the forefront and make people aware of this so that you're not burned by it. Again, it's not a very common practice, but it is a very deceptive one and can also have very um, negative consequences on your mineral estate should you fall into this trap. But before we get into the details, I want to review a couple of definitions. So a little bit has been talked about on the show already about what mineral rights are versus royalties. So I'm not going to go into detail here, but just to recap, uh, so it's fresh on everyone's mind. Mineral rights allows the owner to explore, develop, extract minerals, and in our case, oil and natural gas, but also things like uh, precious metals like gold and silver, coal, copper, iron, and also rare earth minerals. And Mineral rights can be severed from the surface. Again, we cover this in more detail in the Mineral Rights Podcast, Episode 2. So go to mineralrightspodcast.com, Episode 2, if you haven't listened to that already. Uh, That is where we talk about this in a lot more detail, give you some specific examples. So um, so that's what mineral rights are. Now, royalty interest, on the other hand, is an interest in the oil and natural gas that gives the owner the right to receive a portion of the proceeds generated from extracting those products and from selling those products. Uh, It's not burdened by the operating cost, but you you still are responsible for taxes. So royalty interest being the portion or the proceeds generated from the selling of those minerals, and um, it's not typically um, something that has executive rights where unlike mineral rights, you can't sign a lease. And again, we cover that in more detail, but just to recap, there's a difference between mineral rights and royalties. So that's just the main thing to be aware of. Um, And when we talk about leasing, we covered this in episode six in detail, uh, leasing 101 and how to negotiate a typical mineral lease. And a mineral lease is what you'll get in the mail. If you have unleased minerals and somebody wants to lease them, that's a mineral lease. And that's 99.9% of all lease offers. You know, most offers that you get in the mail, this is not to say that you can be aware of of everybody, but just just be aware that there's a difference between a royalty lease and a mineral lease. So Justin, you want to talk a little bit about mineral leasing? I know you've you've, uh, signed a few leases in your time as a mineral owner. Um, What's your experience been? And can you talk a little bit about what you understand a mineral lease to be? Absolutely. And, and I think a great thing, too, in, in Texas, with hundreds of years of history, a royalty deeds are, are much more common, than I think, than some other places. And if you own royalties in a section, you will have never received a lease on that property. Uh, you don't own the executive rights or the rights to sign a lease. But with a uh, mineral lease, uh, when you own unleased minerals, you receive, you'll receive that mineral lease. And usually they're offering you some kind of upfront bonus with a royalty rate in exchange to take over the working interest and develop that land for you. Um, and th- these are very common and they're very beneficial for the landowners usually, um, but it's something that you want to work with an attorney, but this is something that happens every day. And I don't think they, anyone should be leery of that. However, there are some things that you really want to look close for. Yeah, exactly. And again, we cover that in, in a lot more detail in that episode six. So with a mineral lease, you could potentially get, uh, there's, there's two different kinds. Let's talk about here, a paid up oil and gas lease, which is the most common and like you mentioned, Justin, that's where you get the lease bonus and a specific royalty, and that'll be in effect for the entire primary term with no requirements for further payments until production is established, and then at which point you'll get those royalty checks coming in. 
Um, there's also this thing called a lease where you have a delay rental, and that's where you get an annual payment if no production has been established to keep it in effect. So in any case, whether it's a paid up oil and gas lease or a lease with a delay rental, the concept here is this royalty lease you may get in the offer that looks like a top lease. Have you come across a top lease before, Justin? I have not. I can't say that I have ever seen a top lease, but I have heard that these are pretty common in Texas areas, especially in um, areas like Loving County, Reeves County, that are becoming very competitive. Exactly. Yeah. So top lease is where an oil and gas company will come in and they want to secure a land position in an area that basically there, there are no um, open tracts of land. In other words, they're all under lease. And so what they want to do is should an existing lease terminate, uh, they would like to have a top lease in place so that that becomes immediately effective if and when the existing lease expires. And and that allows them to secure that land position rather than letting it expire and then having to compete against several other companies to try to lease that open land. In areas that are extremely competitive, like, like you mentioned, Justin, West Texas is a prime example. Also areas in the Eagle Ford. Um, I've, I've, you know, there's a lot of this going on and that's where you'll see this. And so if you are in Texas, and this is where I've seen this, this royalty lease trap come into play and heard of people falling to, into this trap just because of this fact that they, it, top leasing is fairly common there. And so what you'll get is you'll get something in the mail and you may think it's a top lease and you'll say, okay, well, I'm going to sign this top lease and a top lease, you get the bonus pay, payment um, when you sign the lease, but then it doesn't come into effect unless that existing lease expires. And so that, in other words, that company has taken a risk that they're going to pay you their you know, upfront um, cash in exchange for the option to lease that land uh, should that existing lease expire. So that's what a top lease is. And I think where they're coming and trying to take advantage of people is where this practice is somewhat commonplace. And so somebody may get a, this royalty lease in the uh, mail and it looks and smells and feels like a uh, mineral lease. But in effect, what it is, is a term deed. It's a royalty deed. So you're actually assigning away your royalty in exchange for a payment. And so this is a conveyance document of that royalty and a term deed versus a perpetual deed. That just means that it has a specific time period associated with it. So it'll eventually expire. So that's what it is. And it can be potentially troubling if you fall into this trap and you sign this royalty lease because what you're effectively doing is selling your royalty interest for a fraction of what it's worth. And it's something that if it's worded a particular way, it could be in effect for the, over the life of those wells that are drilled on your land. That's uh, something that's kind of troubling. Have you come across this in your experience? I know you have mineral, your family has minerals in West Texas. And is this something you guys have heard of or seen? Thank goodness we have not encountered this, but it's certainly something that sounds like would take place in Texas. And I think any time that there's a lot of activity going on in the oil and gas industry, it creates a place for people who are going to do bad things. And they're able to kind of do it under the cover. Um, And this is something that you just you really have to watch because you'll be kissing away 75 percent of the royalties that you were receiving. Um, And especially in places like Texas, some leases may be held for for many years beyond the lifetime of the original person who signs. And that's something that could really hurt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, And one of the things I came across, and again, I don't have a lot of stuff in Texas, and so I'm not totally familiar, but I, I did read about Texas property code. And I think one of the reasons that companies may call it a royalty lease is, you know, they can then claim that they're, you know, not going to have to fall under some of the state property code requirements that require you to conspicuously state um, in a certain font. So in 14 point font in any conveyance document, when you're selling um, all or portion of your mineral interest and what it actually requires you to include in those documents under, uh, and this is in sub chapter F section 5.151. It says 
Quote, by executing and delivering this instrument, you are selling all or a portion of your mineral or royalty interest in, and then you have a description of the property being conveyed. And so that is where that is very conspicuously in front on that conveyance document. And so that makes sure, and this is to protect uh, the mineral or royalty owner because of some deceptive practices that happened in the past. And so they have this in there so that you know clearly that you're actually selling your interest and that there's no um, question about it. And that's a requirement. And there's some other very specific things that it outlines. So go to the Texas property code. If you, if if you own minerals in Texas and want to learn more about that, and we can put a link in the show notes that to that actual code. But in this case, what they're trying to do is say, well, this is a lease. And actually in that Texas property code, as an example, it actually says that leases don't fall into this requirement. So I think what they're trying to do is say, oh, this is a lease. We don't have to put that in you know, in the forefront on that document that you sign. So it's a very deceptive way of sort of circumventing that requirement. But then in effect, you're actually still signing a deed. And, and this probably helps to give you an example so that this kind of clearly outlines what, what, what would happen if you were to sign one of these documents. So let's say you have an existing oil and gas lease and you have a 25% royalty in effect. This is, let's say, still under the primary term, or it could be if you if you've established if they've established production and you have a producing well, this would also still apply. Again, you're in an area that's hot, lots of leasing and drilling activity, and you get this offer in the mail, and again, it looks and smells like a mineral lease, and it may say something to the effect of you know, we're acquiring leases in your area on behalf of XYZ company and would like to extend a lease offer. Uh, XYZ company offers to lease your royalty interest under the following terms. So notice here, royalty interest, not mineral interest. And it may say, you know, you may have a lease, you'll get a lease bonus of, let's say 3000 per net royalty acre, again, not per net mineral acre, paid directly to you by a check from XYZ company along with one quarter royalty to lease your interest in the above described tract of land. And the lease may actually say on it oil and gas royalty lease, which is, you see the word royalty in there several times instead of mineral lease or paid up oil and gas lease. So what you're effectively doing, if you were to sign this, is you you would keep a one quarter royalty in your existing lease and in exchange for a paltry sum of money three thousand dollars per net royalty acre so in effect it could be just a couple of months of royalty income that you would have gotten otherwise and in exchange for seventy five percent of your royalty stream in this case until the end of the lease so if you had a 25% royalty in place, so one quarter of one quarter is one sixteenth is what you would be left with instead of the one quarter that you would have expected, the 25%. So that's instead of 25%, you would get 6.25% royalty. So this is a really deceptive practice because, again, you think that you're signing a regular top lease, that it's all things are going to be the same. You have a good royalty rate of one quarter, you have a good lease bonus, you know, all that looks good at the surface, but then you dig into the fine print and see the term royalty acre and royalty interest in there. Effectively, what you're doing is signing a term royalty deed. And in, unless it has a specific time period associated with it, it could be in effect until production ceases under your existing uh, mineral lease. So very deceptive practice basically stealing 75% of your royalties for a very small amount of money. It's something to be very aware of and uh, avoid if if at all possible. And this is a, the kind of practice that I think if you were to come across, it would be worthwhile to refer to the state attorney general to, to see if they can um, pursue this and uh, prevent them from taking advantage of other mineral owners. So yeah, so I know um, any anything going on in your neck of the woods, Justin, in terms of the Permian, I know in, in te- Texas? Absolutely. And well, I think a great thing to note here as well is, is even for people who are not mineral rights owners, so even for royalty owners, um, you know, now, right now in Texas, it's a great time that things that 
for many years have not produced are coming back to life. Um, and if you own royalty in an area, even if you haven't received checks coming from the oil company yet, if you receive something that says a royalty, oil and gas royalty lease, be wary of that. Um, they may be actually seeking you to sign these leases before division, division orders come out from the companies who are going to be producing. I um, mean, I know right now there's two or three companies in Texas that we've been dealing with, um, and we've received a ton of offers to buy those properties. Um, and had we not known that there's a company there getting ready to produce, it may have seemed a lot more lucrative than it is. Yeah, that's a good point. This is a lot of times, like you said, it's going on where there, where production is imminent. So this is in an area where, you know, even if there's existing production, some new wells are likely to be drilled. So they're going to get their money back immediately. So within a month or so, you know, even that first royalty check may may do it. So again, just a just something to be aware of. There, you know, fortunately, there are uh, people out there that look to deceive. Uh, mineral owners. This is something that, again, I have not experienced personally, and, and neither has Justin, but we've read about it and heard from other mineral owners where they've either had the, gotten these offers in the mail and talked to these companies, or they've um, heard of others, or, or they've actually been burned by this um, and didn't realize they were signing away the majority of their royalty stream. So just a warning out there, this is just kind of a a short episode we have this week just to make folks aware of this so that you don't fall under this trap and just wanted to make people aware of this. Again, go to our episode six, which covers leasing in more detail. So the typical mineral lease and how to negotiate that. That's where uh, you can find out more about that. And on a happier note, we actually have some news that that's uh, put us hopefully will put a smile on your face for any royalty owners in the Permian Basin. And a new news article came out on June nineteenth, um, so it's a little bit old, but great news nonetheless. Uh, Permian is going to be uh, Exxon Mobil, the super majors in their area, Exxon Mobil, Chevron, and Shell are going to be investing thirty billion dollars into the Permian Basin area. Um, the news article says that the total suggested size by a IHS market effectively would translate into adding three companies the size of Pioneer Resources to the Permian to achieve their production goals by the end of 2020. Um, so it looks like the activity that's going on in the Permian Basin will do nothing but increase, um, which will be great for mineral right owners in that area. But to what we've been talking about, um, mineral right owners in that area should be that much more diligent because there's going to be the people who wish to take advantage of people coming out as well. Yeah, that's good news. I'm glad that that level of activity is going to continue. It should mean good things for the future for uh, mineral owners and for the legacy, like we always talk about. And then again, yeah, just be vigilant, like like Justin said, and make sure you don't get taken advantage of. And you know, as always, we would recommend hiring a competent attorney to help you with any oil and gas leasing. So if you receive any sort of offers in the mail, this is where and having an attorney that you would consult with a trusted advisor will prevent you from getting, would hopefully prevent you from getting taken advantage of in this scenario because they would catch this and, and flag it and say, no, this is not a top lease. This is actually a royalty lease there. This is what it means to you. Should you sign it? I think that's a good wrap up Matt on this issue. And hopefully this will help people to keep them out of a sticky situation. And thanks again. And uh, if you have not subscribed already on iTunes, please go and subscribe and leave an honest rating and review today. I can appreciate all of the feedback that we've gotten and we read all of the ratings and reviews. To ask a question also to be featured on an upcoming episode, you can leave a comment at mineralrightspodcast.com or send an email to feedback at mineralrightspodcast.com. So thank you again, and until next time. Thanks so much for listening to the Mineral Rights Podcast with your host, Matt Sands. Don't forget to subscribe and share at mineralrightspodcast.com. The Mineral Rights Podcast should not be construed as investment, legal, or tax advice. All information is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy.